Welcome to possibly the finale? Who knows? Uh, it was I who ca uh, press everything. The law of the land. You admit that rather easily. These days I have long grown tired of killing. <laughs> but in those halcyon days, I devoted myself to the path of an executioner. If one cannot admit that much, what can he admit? Right, Anubis? Yes, yes, my boy. I feel like he's saying something scary, but it's kind of hard to understand him. This fallen priest is saying he has no feelings about the president's death. Dogen, the assassin, and the escaped prisoner. He should be a despicable opponent, but... Silencing him now would be imprudent. I must keep my composure and let him talk. I understand your point. You killed the president. That is correct. The aim of my blade never misses its mark. Alright, uh, press again. Your life was targeted, you, the assassin. It would be something if, 12 years ago, it was Shelley to kill her, and he, as a result, carried the torch of the assassin. The hunter becomes the hunted, the Buddhist becomes the Buddha. I'm not with you on that last one. Okay, you don't have to make up strange proverbs. Life is transient, especially for an assassin whose life is always exposed to danger. So does that mean the people you've tried to kill have fought back? That is a rare occurrence. However, this was different. Body Double, Blaze, and Patricia all sought to seal my lips. Siren Dogen, you are a master assassin. As such, could you not have evaded an attack from those three and fled the scene? <laughs> you greatly overestimate me. Without Anubis by my side, I would not even have been able to walk about. If those three were to attack me at once, I would not stand a chance. I see, so even an assassin will fall to superior numbers in a frontal assault. A blind one would! Also, how were you not caught before this if the dog was literally the only thing protecting you, and three guys could have... I'm Not even three guys! Two dudes and a woman who, 12 years ago, she probably wasn't, you know, crazy jacked like Blaze and the body double were. Like, just jumped you. Really? I suppose one could say that. I, Seer and Dogen, would have suffered a shameful defeat. Had I not been reunited with the young acolyte back then, reunited with the young acolyte. Curious word choice. Reunited? So when did you first meet with him? That would be 18. Okay, so it liter it's not Marsh, thank God. We're not doing the he's actually an adult that looks like a child. 18 years ago on the 24th of. Shit! That's the IS-7 case. And that's a rather long time ago. On that day, our rules were reversed. I saved the young one's life. So... This is either the kid of... Dover or Gustavia. And is it possible it's Shelly to kill her? That would be weird. It'd be kind of cool, but it would be weird. Mm, there was an unnatural snowstorm that day. The temperature was well below freezing. I took Anubis for a walk in the snow. That's when Anubis noticed something and started running. I followed after him and found a car. I had great difficulty opening the door. It had frozen shut. Oh. Oh. In the back seat, there were two young children shivering from the cold. Two children? They had remained in the car for an hour longer. They would surely have frozen to death. I brought the two of them to a nearby orphanage. Is there anything about Dogen's story that concerns me? Yeah, there is something fucking put in there. What concerns me is the date, the number of children, the model of the car. Well, number of children, too. Model of the car? And there were two children in the car. You're sure of that? It may have been 18 years ago, but I remember it clearly. There were two children in the car. There's no mistaking it. Does the good prosecutor have a problem with that number? Right now, the number of children isn't what I have a problem with. Are we done talking about the subject yet? What concerns me is the date, then. 24th of December, 18 years ago. Are you sure about that? There is no mistake. Could that mean... <laughs> Thank you for your input, Ray. <laughs> well, toodaloo. I know, the significance behind the date. Well, bums.
I'm having crow tonight instead of that delicious sandwich I talked about a few episodes ago. Because, wouldn't you know it, that case does relate. Not entirely, but at least more than just Blaze was kind of involved in it. Although, it still concerns me why one of the kids had his hands tied. But yeah, so one of the kids was an acolyte. Where are they now? It might be Shelley to kill her? The killer sounds like a name a child would come up with for a killer. Would be interesting, though. Although it doesn't seem... Well, I mean, if they were... Uh, call it like 9 or 10, 18 years ago, uh, they would be like almost 30. I can believe Shelley's, you know, in his 30s. He's got stitches on his face to make him look older, but... You know, I know the significance behind that date. What shows me... Oh, for God's sake. The one piece of evidence we've never used. That day, a certain incident occurred. A sculptor was murdered. Ah! During that incident, two young boys went missing. I suppose if I had to pick one of them to be... Uh... This guy. It would be the one with the shaved head. Maybe put on a fusion earring and just sort of combine. Who knows? Eh. Still, though, that raises the question of where the hell, uh... If this is Dover's son, then where is... Um... Gustavia's son? That's my question. Whatever. The sons of the victim, Isaac Dover, and the culprit, Dane Gustavia. We never did find out where those two boys went after the... We never did find out where those two boys went after the case 18 years ago. Faith and Begora. I've just been in the back here, drinking away at my Guinness. It's almost, uh... Actually, I believe it's the day after St. Patrick's Day. So, you know, that voice is totally offensive, but I don't fucking care. From what I've been led to understand, the Irish kind of think people doing absurd accents of them are pretty funny, actually. Because they're so wildly off. Oh. There were the sons of a victim and a culprit. It all makes sense now. What makes sense? One of the youths was bound so that he could not move. Mr. Dover did that so Mr. Gustavia's son couldn't come to the cont contest venue. Indeed, Gustavia was using his own son as a taste tester. <laughs> To think that that was what had transpired. Neither child seemed to recall what had happened. They lost their memory. The acolyte told me that- Why do you keep calling him an acolyte? Told me this when we were reunited 12 years ago. The pair were placed in an extreme situation on the verge of freezing to death. That trauma led them both to suffer from amnesia. Don't think that works that way, but whatever. I also don't know enough about amnesia or trauma to definitively say. Neither could so much as remember his own name. So they didn't even know that they were the sons of Mr. Dover and Mr. Gustavia? Indeed, while we cannot say it conclusively, the probability is quite high. However, we still don't have enough information to deduce the mastermind's identity. Dogen, would you please continue your story? Yeah, very well. So, new testimony, I guess. Dogen and the Acolyte. Continue my correspondence with the young Acolyte even after entering prison. Recently, that has all come to an abrupt halt, however. It left me quite concerned. Was it nightly? Furthermore, those involved in the crime 12 years ago were all... Uh, furthermore, those involved in the crime 12 years ago were all drawn into incidents one by one. I grew more and more curious, and, I so, and so I absconded briefly from the prison. Those involved 12 years ago... Where Patricia Rowland, Blaze to Best, and President Huang's body double. We'll just call him Dave from now on. And Miss Rowland was the warden of Mr. Dogan's prison. Yeah, I blackmailed the warden. That woman tried to kill me. Perhaps the good prosecutor has already deduced the reason. You murdered President Huang. However, the world still believed he was alive. And if you were able to prove the president was a fake... Both Patricia Rowland and Blaise de Bess would have been in danger. That is correct. And I had heard the proof with my own ears. Was Knightley the Acolyte? I'll be waiting in the courtyard for the orphanage at midnight February 9th. Even if it's just once, I want John to be able to meet you. I'm sorry if I'm being selfish. I'm not doing a voice for this character. I've run out of damn voices. 
Poor guy. He brought a doll and flower. Man. Ah, <laughs> uh, man. Poor Kong. I feel bad for the guy. You know? Who might you be? My apologies, but I am presently waiting for someone. <laughs> I am well aware of that, President Huang. Are you not meeting with your son? However, I do not spill blood needlessly. You may relax. I seek only the President's life. It can't be. Please, wait! I am just about to meet my son for the first time. I'm sure this will be the first and last time. Please, at least wait until we are finished. I had thought the President would beg for his life, but he was of a different sort. Officially, the President had no son. However, he shook his head and said, This illegitimate son was his, and he intended to recognize him publicly. Furthermore, he claimed that he'd already made preparations towards that end. Would that son of his be the boy with the horns over there by any chance? How do you know that if you're blind? Boy with the horns? Wait, you can see John's horns? <laughs> there is no need to see them. From the moment I escaped the prison until now, I have been closely lending an ear to your voices. He said the president made preparations towards recognizing his son, but the word preparations alone would be insufficient for blackmail. That's it! There was one thing that could prove Huang's words. The will held by the Huang, the House of Lang. It was, all the, it was also proof of his trust in us. His son's existence would have been revealed to the world. The name of the recording, the mention of the preparations, and the will in Zhang Fa. <laughs> Together they suffice to make the warden bow to my words. With those three pieces of information, one could prove the identity of the devil. By using John! Yes, a simple test. The president blocked the first strike of my knife with something soft. You dick! You didn't even let him see his son! As pieces of it fell atop the snow, I struck once more. This time, the blow proved fatal. You know, there is something about a blind guy swinging a sword around that just isn't that threatening as far as assassins go. Don't get me wrong, this guy's terrifying, and he's clearly a confirmed killer. But at the same time, if I were, you know, back to the wall, blind guy swinging a sword at me, the fact that this was a blind dude who was just sort of randomly swinging a sword would occur to me. And yeah, all right, ooh, he has senses, he would hear your movements and such, etc., etc. It's possible, yes, but eh, that there would still be a part of me that's like, really? A blind guy? So Dogen cut off Muzila Doll's horn. Doll, yeah, sure. None but I heard the final none but I heard his final words. Only myself and that child knew of the president's secret son. I continued my Oh Jesus. I'm so close to the end of the game, I can see the finish line. Just have to press everything. In other words, you contact you contacted him from prison. <laughs> that is correct. A post office a post office box was used. A post office box? It would allow one to send and receive letters without revealing the recipient's location. Well, quite. I could not use a form of correspondence that would reveal the acolyte's location. There was someone keeping watch over my correspondences, after all. He must mean the prison warden, Patricia Rowland. Could you be more specific about the nature of your correspondence? It, it's nightly, isn't it? Well, they were mainly moves from my correspondence. Yep, it is nightly. Correspondence chess, if I recall correctly, the person you were playing against. And this might be hard to believe, but Dogen's chess opponent was. Ah! You're saying he was playing against Mr. Knightley! Wasn't it Horace Knightley? We certainly found the correspondence chess memo in Knightley's cell. Oh god, this is back now. <laughs> so much evidence! Sent from Dogen to Knightley, typed on a word processor. Alright, so. Knightley was one of the sons, probably Dover, based on the face. He looks kind of like Dover. Knightley was the son of Dover, probably, who had amnesia and was dropped off at an orphanage by Dogen, and then was there on the night Dogen killed the real president, only to then help Dogen escape 
and grow up to become a bodyguard guarding the fake president who he knew was the fake president. And then he killed Rook for some reason and then was killed by Patricia. Ah, <sighs> oh, jeez, this game. I gotta say I'm impressed. This is some quality writing on display here. They are tying everything up. Does that mean Nightly Boy was the kid from the IS-7 incident? Could that really be true? Is there any evidence? Oh, for God's sakes. Is there any evidence that connects Nightly to the IS-7 incident? I don't know. Fucking... He had a chessboard? A ring. Ah, oh, tits. Yep, that's it. This was all that might be left behind. Could there be a clue hidden within? Which should I investigate? The ring. The ring of the chessboard. The ring. What a shock. This ring is... Mr. Edgeworth, what is it? Mr. Shields, please take a look at this ring. This pattern. It's... it's pure hookets. I thought so. Had Mr. Dover's seal turned into a ring. He had Mr. Dover's seal turned into a ring. However, why would he have this? Shouldn't it have been had by the police as evidence from the I-7 incident? After the incident, the seal was returned to the victim's next of kin. And Mr. Dover's only family was his son. But since no one knew where his son had gone to, it took a while to get it to him. I'd heard that the police had finally found him and delivered his inheritance, but... So the seal was thereby safely delivered to his son. And then he turned the seal into a ring and what? Jesus. Blaze and Patricia have been fucking people over for a long time. Although, I guess it all started with Dane, but he wasn't particularly involved. Unless, no, I was going to say unless Dane was body double. No, I have no idea what Dane's son. Well, yeah, the kid's dead now. He turned the seal into a ring and wore it on his person. Good lord. So, Mr. Knightley was Mr. Dover's son? The police aren't fools. I'm sure they did a thorough check before handing over the seal. If someone involved in the IS-7 incident was his chess opponent... Nightly, huh? Then that man must be the mastermind behind this case. But Nightly is dead! He can't be involved in this incident. Also, he couldn't mastermind his way out of a paper bag. How about that? The only one who could be the mastermind was himself a murder victim. But a dead guy can't be the culprit, so there's no way that's right. It certainly is strange, in that case, who is the culprit? I don't know! Recently has come to a abrupt halt, however. Left me quite concerned. It came to a halt? Now, of all times? Quite odd, is it not? Anubis told me again and again how odd it was. That scary dog talked? Was he, like, something odd? Woof! <laughs> I can understand Anubis' heart, even if he does not voice his thoughts. Ah, uh, that's dumb, but whatever. Um, then there's something I'd like to ask, just in case. Your scary dog's staring at me right now. He's not saying, I'm hungry, and I want some meat, right? <laughs> perhaps. Perhaps? Uh, Mr. Edgeworth? It seems she's not much good with the assassin's dog. Good boy, good boy. There's a good boy. So then, at any rate, my correspondence with the Acolyte suddenly came to an abrupt halt. Furthermore, those involved in the crime 12 years ago were all drawn into the incidents one by one. That certainly does seem too much for a mere coincidence. The body double of Di Huang and the president of Zhengfa faked an assassination plot. Patricia Rowland, the prison warden, murdered Horace Knightley. And Blaze de Best, the chairman of the pick, murdered Jill Crane. Come to think of it, as I have been investigating these cases, I have felt the presence of some force behind the scenes. Yeah, even within the prison, I can tell this was no insignificant event. I'm more and more curious, so I absconded briefly from the prison. You absconded briefly from the prison? I cannot forgive such a criminal act. You stole your way out of prison? I cannot forgive such a thieving act. Haha. <laughs> Relax, no one was hurt. I merely have connections that allow me to set foot outside. But even so, you can't just escape from prison, pal. Arrest him! Arrest him! That won't be necessary. Once my business is done, I shall return to my cell. It's a very nice cell. 
You try and make fools of us. <sighs> a prison isn't the kind of place you can just enter and leave at will. <laughs> the wolf may say that, but one can see the wolf and his pack of what also share an interest in the tale of my past. <laughs> Agent Lang, Detective Gumshoe. There are still a few things I must ask Dogen. Please postpone matters until then. Yes, sir. I knew you'd say that, Mr. Redworth. Damn it all. But I'm not taking my eye off you for a second. Writing letters in Braille can be a rather enjoyable pastime. When did he say that? Excuse me, but you wrote your letters in Braille? Indeed, for I possess the tools necessary to write in Braille. I don't know what that would be for... Well, okay, I guess thick enough paper, yeah. Wow, so you need to use tools to write in Braille. I never knew. Then would you please tell us what you wrote? Everything. Letters, of course. And also movements of the chess pieces. He wrote the movements of the chess pieces by hand. And that statement is intriguing. So then, how does your handmade dog piece move? Okay, that question can wait. So then, what did you do with the letter stopped coming? <laughs> Within the prison, I grew increasingly concerned about the Acolyte's whereabouts. Okay, okay, um, but even so, I don't really get it. Who exactly is this Acolyte? Indeed, Dogen himself is not... We... Uh, really? Game. Dogen and this Acolyte, their correspondence. It's not just the letters. We should pay attention to the means they used as well. We know who the Acolyte is. Recently, it all came to an end. Furthermore, I grew more and more curious. Writing letters in Braille can be... Okay, so it's the Braille thing, obviously. Okay, writing letters in Braille can be a fun past and enjoyable pastime. Alright, so let's see his correspondence letter. Sent from Dogen to Knightley. This is decidedly not Braille. Objection! I'm certain you said you wrote your letters in Braille. Correct. The good prosecutor must know that I am lacking in sight, do you not? The correspondence chess letter we found had been typed out using a word processor. What? That cannot be. What do you mean? So someone went out of their way to retype the letters on a computer. Could another person have acted as a middleman between Dogen and Knightley? What do you mean? I mean, if his mail was in his... <laughs> Dogen's short. Dogen wrote his letters in Braille, however... By the time it reached night, they had been rewritten on word processor. We must assume that some middleman reloaded those letters. And the reverse can also be said. And the reverse can also be said. That same somebody might have taken the letters Knightley wrote and redelivered them to Dorgan. Yes, that is indeed true. Correspondence chess memo updated in my organizer. Well, this is a pickle. Oh god. I'm so close to the end. When we come back, hopefully the end. 